kristne er generelt rigtig, rigtig glade for Jesus og nyhedsmændte og alt det der med næste kærlighed og tilgivelse. Men det kan godt være lidt svært at vide, hvordan man egentlig skal forholde sig til det med gammelsmændte. Hvor mm, bogstaveligt er det der med skabelsesberetningen. Mm, øh, har Moses overhovedet eksisteret? Og hvordan er det lige med det der med stening? Går Gud egentlig ind for det? Alt det her, det har jeg valgt at spørge professor i gammelsmændte, Chris Wright om. Og øh, han er på sommerværelse i den her uge i år, og derfor så er vi taget dertil. Øh, det er altså i Horsens i år. Okay. Nå, men så... Ja. Jesus does not question or criticize the Old Testament in any way, and indeed he has plenty to say about the wrath of God. Uh, the, some of the parables of Jesus are very scary indeed, as does the Apostle Paul, as does the book of Revelation. So it's not true to say that the Old Testament provides a God of wrath and anger and the New Testament only shows us a God of love and grace. Both testaments in both parts of the Bible show us that God is both angry with sin and opposed to evil and full of grace and mercy and love. If, if people want to say, well, I'm not ashamed of Jesus in the gospel, but I'm, I'm a bit ashamed of the Old Testament, I would want to ask, well, which Jesus and what gospel are you preaching? Questions like, um, you know, did Moses ever exist? I mean, at one level, all we can say on that is, There's no way of proving that he did or he didn't. I mean, we have the records, we have the scriptures, we have the evidence of the people who emerged out of slavery in Egypt and emerge as a nation in, in their uh, unity as a nation in, in Israel. Something happened in between there. <laughs> and the theory that somehow this all happened without there being a personality like Moses is in itself guesswork. The historical truth that these things happened, that, that God did something, that there was a, a true exodus, that there was a settlement in the land, that these things happened. We need to understand that as a truthful account of what God did. But whether every detail of the narrative can be tick box checked against archaeological discovery, that, that is something that I don't think God wants us to ask about, or that we need to. If God had given to Moses a scientific account of the origins of the universe and the laws of physics, nobody could have understood it back then, and almost nobody could have understood it even now, today, including you and me, probably, unless you're a physical scientist or something. What God did was he took the language of those people to express the creation in terms of it being God's home, God's creation, God's temple in which God has come to live with the human race. One of the reasons we find it difficult perhaps is because we don't take sin seriously enough. We, we are not as aware as we should be of what our sin and evil does to us, to the world, to one another and to God and therefore we don't realize the cost of sin and evil that God himself has borne. So there are aspects of, of the Old Testament that are, that are difficult. Um, nobody likes the way in which God brings judgment on the Canaanites through the Israelites. And of course, it is God's judgment. It's not just ethnic cleansing. It is, it is God using one nation as the agent of judgment on another in his moral righteousness just as God would later use the Syrians, the Assyrians, the Babylonians as the agents of God's judgment on the Israelites. Both Jesus and Paul affirm that the scriptures of the Old Testament do provide us with truthful revelation about God, which we need, and the New Testament doesn't always repeat what the Old Testament teaches, it assumes it. So we cannot cut out or lose the Old Testament without basically cutting off the very foundations of our faith. Having said that, of course, the Old Testament is, I would prefer to say, like a great journey. It leads us to Christ. It's always on the move towards Christ. Uh, but we need to walk that journey with Israel and to see the God who was leading them forward until we get to Christ himself. When Jesus comes, it's not that the disciples and the others read off all the prophecies of the Old Testament and say, oh, yeah, yeah, here he fits, tick, 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 tick. But rather, what happens is, they look at Jesus and they say, what is happening here? Are you the one who was to come or should we look for somebody else? Um, and Jesus does not 
rebuke them and to say, hey, you know, don't you know who I am? Here's my name badge, you know, Jesus, Messiah, Son of God, you know, here's my halo. He doesn't, he says, look around you, what is happening? And he says, the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, the poor have the good news preached to them. What he is doing is he's quoting from Isaiah chapter 35. People like Abraham, Moses, Ruth and Naomi, um, they know God. It's not that we know God and we wish they had known God better. They, they knew the living God. They trusted him. They sought to obey him. They did not yet know the Lord Jesus Christ, but they had a, an awareness of God and a knowledge of God, which in some respects I want to have. Many of the questions you've been asking me assume that we know what the Christian church is and we've got problems with the Old Testament. That's the complete reverse of the situation in the New Testament. Their problem was not, is the Old Testament really Christian? Their problem was, are we, the Christian church, scriptural? So to them, the scriptures were the authority and the church had to conform. Whereas we have turned it the other way around and made ourselves the authority and then we've got problems with the scriptures. So that might help some people to say, yeah, maybe we need to sort ourselves out a bit uh, and try to ask, am I in line with, with the whole Bible and the way God has explained himself in the, in the scriptures as a whole? Remembering that Jesus and Paul and Peter, they never preached from the New Testament. They never read the New Testament. They knew the scriptures. For them, that was the word of God. And that's where they find the God of creation and the God of salvation.